Welcome back to my irregular period video posting. Today I brought you another exciting mining rig for Duino coin. But before I proceed to show you how I built one, let me explain the main motivation behind the creation of this new mining rig and the new feature introduced. Let's rewind back to year 2021 July. That's the time when I bought my 10 Arduino Nano clone and created the tutorial video. Click on the Nano rig link on the top right to view it if you are interested. Back then, the selling price of one unit of Nano is around 16 ringgit, around 4 USD. I was already thinking, wow, that's not as cheap as I would think. But seeing the title free cable for each Nano, I bite the bullet and bought them anyway. This turned out to be one of the best decisions I had. Fast forward to almost one year later, one unit of nano clone from the same seller is now selling at almost 30 ringgit or 750 USD. That's 88% price hike. Some more there is no more free cable. If taking the cable price which is around 3 ringgit or 75 cents USD into consideration, the actual price hike is at 130%. This is mind boggling. This would mean the rig that I built is now worth twice the price I paid for it last year. Let's forget about the original Arduino Nano price at almost 100 ringgit or 25 USD. I don't know about you, but at least for me, no one would in their right mind will buy this to build the mining rig. Again, cable not included. This is another way to show people how rich you are if you build this rig using this original Arduino Nano. In all of this silicon shortage and exploding selling price, Raspberry Pi Foundation released the Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040. Not only it is cheaper, the RP2040 have dual core 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 Plus CPU, 264KB as RAM and 2MB flash size. This is way way better than the Arduino Nano in terms of raw processing power. Did I mention about the built-in temperature sensor that can be used in Duino Coin IoT reporting? That's right. Now you can report temperature wherever the Pico is mining. At selling price of almost 18 ringgit or around 5 USD, it is a no-brainer decision to use this Pico to build the mining rig, which is what I did. Again, I'm not encouraging anyone to go out and buy them. You should only use whatever you already have. This is the wiring diagram that I designed. Raspberry Pi 0W2 is chosen here as I2C master because of its small form factor, wireless connectivity and multi-threading capability to run Python script. Other I2C master like ESP01S, ESP8266 node MCU or ESP32 should work as well with minor wiring modification. However, they do run slower. Watch my other video on how to choose the best I2C master using the link on the top right corner if you like to know more. The Pico are arranged in two columns and five rows. On the bottom left is the I2C pull up resistors and two channels dip switch to choose between single I2C master or dual I2C master. The pull up resistors and DIP switch is not needed if you are not going to use the dual I2C master. This is the material list that I use, not a lot, but I do want to point out the number of Pico is entirely up to you. One Pico is equivalent to two workers, so 10 Pico in the list here means 20 workers. With all that said, let's get our hand dirty. The whole project took me around 6 hours to complete. You can use any single board computer. I'm using Raspberry Pi 02W. As long as it has iSquare interface, then you are good. Next is the Raspberry Pi Pico. Depending on your budget, you can decide how many do you need. Each package came with male straight header pins and pinout information. I'm not using header pins that came with it. Instead, I'm using right angle header pins. We also need the female pin header. Optionally, the two channels dip switch and 4.7 kilo ohm resistor the perf board which hold the pico in this arrangement 
the connector will be placed here then some jumper wires and the micro USB cable this cable can be used to upload the sketch into the Pico and later be used to power the whole rig unlike Arduino Nano mining rig logic level converter or LLC is not needed here because both master and slave communicate in 3.3 volt we also need standoff to provide legs to the perf board so the wiring below the board will not be pressed against the surface you can use any kind of standoff for example this is the plastic standoff but i'm missing two female standoff yeah i could cut it in half and have additional two then screw it with the board alternatively i can use ordinary screws and nut and this is how it will be screwed to the board adding three more to get the board to stand up nicely other tools that i'm going to use are the soldering iron the soldering iron tip cleaner the soldering pump in case i make mistake during soldering solder wire and multimeter to check continuity and detect shots okay let's prepare the pin first by using the pico as the measuring tool cutting it according to the length i like to push the spacer all the way in to make it more compact and save more space this is the side by side comparison of before and after then i'll put it on to pico like this the excess pin will be trimmed off the original spacer placement make the pico look awkward taking up more board space than necessary The modified version here will have same height as Pico boot select button. Next, we will need to solder the pins onto the Pico. Make sure the pins are inserted to the correct side where the V6 is located. let the soldering begin each pico need 20 soldering points and 10 pico will need 200 the soldering sequence i'm using here is to solder odd number pins then even number pins although not needed but it might help to lower the risk of overheating the pico Once all pico were soldered, start clipping all the excess pins. With all that done, I mark all pico with numbers from 0 to 9. It will help me to track down which board is defective just by looking at the I2C address. Moving on to work on the main board, let's prepare the female pin header. Again, using the Pico as measuring ruler, lightly mark the line where it will need to be cut in half. Then use the same knife again to make the cut deeper.
split them in half with hand arranging them on the board according to the plan schematic and find a way to flip them over. It is a bit tricky but I am using rubber band to help me with that. It doesn't matter if the pin header is not straight as long as it helps to keep it from falling off the board. Here is how I straighten the pin header by soldering and adjusting the position at the same time. Solder the first pin and last pin to keep everything in place. After everything is straight, proceed to solder all the pins. Soldering all the pins help to strengthen the header as you might be doing lots of pickle inserting and removing in the future and you do not want to see the header came off while the few pins are still on the board. Next, add the external facing connector pins. Recall there's three straight pins that came with each pico. Cut seven pins and solder them on board. If you only plan for a single I2C master from bus 1, then you will only need 4 pins. Since I'm adding single and dual I2C master feature switching capability, I'm adding these two channels deep switch. Adding pull up resistor here because Raspberry Pi I2C Master Bus 0 do not have built in pull up resistor. Verify connectivity using multimeter. As wiring process is started, put on the standoff to have a reduced risk of pressuring on the wires. Start removing insulator from the wire, it will be easier to solder it on board later. For me, I'm making a small hook with a plier, then hook it to the pin hole, solder it so it acts like an anchor for the subsequent solder point.
Now for the wiring to the connector, I'm making the wire to do right angle turn and solder them down. For the flyover wires, the insulator must not be removed so they will not create shorts. Again, make a small hook and solder it to make it easier to work on later. Again, check the connectivity with multimeter. Flip the single dual master switch and check for continuity. Take out 7 wires from the ribbon cable. Label each wire with a name on both ends. By the way, it is expected one pin of the Pico have nothing to connect to because we sacrifice one pin when splitting the female pin header in half. That should be the end of the hardware build. I'm trying to make this tutorial video bite size for ease of digestion. For next video, I will demonstrate how to load the sketch that utilizes both CPU into Pico and launch the Python miner in single or dual I2C master mode. The video link will be available in the description below once it is available. And that's the end of my video. If you think this is interesting and it helped you, do consider to donate to Ko to JK. Thank you very much to support me. Hit like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.